Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and who's ready for some Nick Cage? Because that's right, today I am reacting to Con Air. Uh, and that's one of the only things I know about this movie. Um, I know Nick Cage is in it. I know it has to do with an airplane. And I know there's something about a bunny. I don't know what, but I've heard people quote that when talking about this movie. But I, 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 that's all I know. I don't know like the whole plot or anything. I just know there's something about a bunny. Um, and I think I've seen what Nick Cage looks like in this movie, but that's not a big deal. Um, I don't know how much this was even talked about in uh, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Because I know there was a lot of movies that were... Uh, talked about, discussed, or even just referenced in that for obvious reasons. Um, I don't know how much this was, like, compared to other ones offhand. Uh, but this is one of those Nick Cage movies I've just never seen, along with the likes of, I don't know, Wicker Man and everything. Um, not because I, I've had a disinterest necessarily, I just never got around to it. It's just not something I've ever focused my attention on checking out. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't really know much going into this. Um, more than some other movies, but not much. And, I mean, that's going to make this interesting. I don't even know when this came out. I know it's a Jerry... Okay, there's one other thing I know about. It's a Jerry Bruckheimer film. I only know that because that came up when I started the, the, the file. I put up the file on uh, on the video player already. It's sitting there, paused, waiting. Uh, and when I brought it up, it's like, oh, Jerry Bruckheimer film. Because um, I, I get that up usually ahead of time to save time and to check to uh, how to ratio, like whether it's widescreen or not. So yeah. Um, so I know that that as well. Um, and. Jerry Bruckheimer also was behind National Treasure, I believe, too. So, not the only time that uh, Jerry Bruckheimer and Nick Cage have worked together. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I don't know much of anything else about this, but I'm definitely interested. I'm definitely interested to see uh, what this is like. Because I've heard a lot of people say this is one of Nick Cage's best. Um... I, I guess we'll have to see. In, in my opinion, my, my favorite Nick Cage movie is still National Treasure. It's like, I, I've seen that so many times. I can't even begin to guess how many times exactly. And it just, it never gets old. It never gets old. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. It's stupid as hell, obviously. I mean, it's fucking National Treasure. Of course it's stupid. But it's, it, it's, stupid in a very good entertaining way it never feels like it's just dumb and hard to watch it feels like oh this is dumb and i can't stop watching it over and over <laughs> um i think the first time i saw it might have been in, in in school actually funny enough i think hard to say um but either way either way we're just going to get this started, see what Con Air has uh, in store for us, find out what the deal with the bunny is. Let's let's get this going. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode, or to the movie, rather. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. It was good. <laughs> I, I mean, this is not what I would call one of the best movies I've seen from Nicolas Cage. Um, there were some things that I feel didn't really work as well and obviously there's some stuff that's very very uh outdated let's just say um some some lines and jokes that just 
little bit hard to watch, a little cringy. And obviously, some things being hard to watch make sense. These are mostly all bad people. Like, uh, Johnny23 trying to, uh, rape the female guard multiple times. It's like, he's a terrible bad person. It makes sense that they do terrible bad shit. So I'm not really that surprised or anything by it. Um, it's just, it is sometimes hard to watch and all that. Um, and again, there's some stuff that just doesn't work really. There's some, let's be honest, some things that are said in this that are maybe a little racist and whatnot. Um, some things that are said and done that just didn't age well. Um, but that's, that's just going to be the case. Let me, let me see, when did this come out? Because even outside of the, like, the facial hair, Danny Trejo actually kind of looked a little younger, too. Um, I'm thinking maybe early 90s. Oh, late 90s, actually. 97, okay. Later than I was thinking. But still, that's like over 20 years ago. <laughs> Which is wild to think about, but yeah. Um, I thought all the actors did a good job for what their roles were. Um... I almost kind of questioned the point of Steve Buscemi's character, though. Like, he didn't do anything. Like, even outside of just the fact that, like, he didn't, like, attack or kill anyone or, or whatnot. Like, his brand of crazy, as I said during the reaction, was more like the calm, calculated crazy. The guy who sees normal uh, human life as more crazy and stuff. Um... He didn't add anything to this. There there was like he he spouted some some babble about like what true insanity is. Had this weird scene with this young girl who I guess was actually there for some reason. Um and then he, I guess, survived the plane crash and just started gambling in Vegas. Because why not? Like, seriously, he added nothing to the movie. He was just there. He didn't do anything. He, he, he had no role. You could have taken him out completely. It wouldn't have changed anything. Like, even some of the other ones, like, uh, um, Pinball. Even he at least had a role to play, even if he uh, did die earlier on. He at least did something, you know what I mean? He, he wasn't like a pointless character that felt randomly thrown in. Um, the, the core concept of, you know, an ex-army uh, guy uh, being in prison and for involuntary manslaughter and everything and getting out to meet with his family including his daughter who was born while he was incarcerated and then getting you know swept up in all of this it, it, it's a fine premise I, I have no real issue with it um I, I just think the execution is a little how do I put this silly like, like, it's a little over the top, and it seems like the, the just the fact that this was even able to happen feels like there were a lot of major oversights made when transporting these criminals in the first place. This should not by any means have been able to occur. There's absolutely no way this should have been able to happen. Even though these criminals somehow planned this together, which also is a wild idea that they were somehow able to make these massive, well-thought-out plans together and everything. And even though that, that was the case, it still shouldn't have been able to actually have gone off that easily for them. It just feels like this was unrealistically and unbelievably in their favor and i know I, I know that a lot of these movies it's like you have to have that you have to you have to have the villains be able to 
get the upper hand for the plot to take place. But you also kind of want it to feel believable. Because if it feels too unbelievable, it's, it's like you're not going to buy into the events that are happening. And that, I think, was my biggest my biggest issue with this. Is that I just didn't kind of buy any of this was happening. In the first place. Um, yeah, just overall, like, it's not bad by any means. It's not the best, though. It has its issues here and there. And I, I don't even mind it being a little goofy, because it's a Nicolas Cage movie. It's like you expect the goofiness. Um, and it's starring actors like John Malkovich. Of course there's going to be goofiness. <laughs> and then Steve Buscemi. But again, it's just like... It's the way it was executed. That I had more of the issue with. I feel if it was just executed a little better, it, it, it would have been a much better movie for me. Um, and don't get me wrong. Again, I enjoyed it well enough. Uh, I, I was rooting for the good guys. But I just feel like it could have been executed a little better. That's all. Um, but it was still fun. Just not one of Nicolas Cage's best, in my opinion. Um, but I can say I've seen it now. I, I can say that... Uh, I, I've seen it, I enjoyed it enough, and it's one of those Nick Cage movies that I've been missing out on all this time that I can now say I'm no longer missing out on. <laughs> I'm just repeating myself at this point. I don't know what else to say about this film. Um, tell me in the comments below what did you think of Con Air. For now though, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.